Um, well, let's go ahead and start with prayer. We have a lot of things that we can uh, be praying about. There's a lot of people in our nation that are very ill, and then there's uh, the government that's trying to figure things out and uh, questionable whether or not they're doing a good job of that or not. So uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have of um, studying about your creation. Lord, you know that the struggles and the problems that people are having throughout our nation, uh, some people no longer have uh, jobs and no longer have money to buy the things they need. Some people are very sick. Um, and our government needs wisdom. We pray that you would guide them as they make decisions that they might be wise ones and not based on political gain. And I pray that you would uh, guide our studies, help us that we might uh, glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's static coming from somewhere. Do you hear that, the static, or is that just me? I hear a no, little I bit. Hear it. Okay. All right. Well, um, uh, let's maybe out it. Let me see if I can turn that off. No, that's not what I need to do. Okay. Um, so let's, first of all, go over some new policies, I guess. Um, so for the lab 14.2, we're going to do that, sort of do that in class today, but uh, I'm not going to require you to do drawings or, or, or even write this one up. So uh, we'll just, we'll just uh, let that one go. Uh, but for next week, um, the, the lab, I'm sorry, we're not in lab 14.2 or 13.2. Um, the lab for next week, where you're supposed to look at lung tissue, um, if you could go online and just look at microscopic images of lung tissue and uh, make your sketches from that, uh, that's how that lab will be written up. Um, and let's see. Um, I need you to be sure that you uh, scan and email your homework. Or did, are any of you, do any of you have problems doing that? I didn't hear you. I haven't sent it in yet. Okay. Me and Olsen got ours in earlier this morning, so okay. we shouldn't have any problems in the future. All right. So some, I know not everybody might have scanners or uh, whatever. Yeah, we don't have a scanner. My mom just said to like turn the flash on to the picture of it, but I don't really know. That's okay. Funny. Okay. Um, well, the, the other thing we can do if you don't have uh, access to scanners and things like that, um, is just have your mom grade things and send the or, and check them and send them to me. Um, uh, see. Coloring is going to be the difficult one <laughs> to get scanned because there's a lot of times a lot of pages for that. But um, what I'm probably going to do is um, send the um or forward the coloring pages to mrs reed who's been grading those forward labs to mrs um Thin. and i'll take the rest of it okay um let's take a look at your quizzes everybody got your quizzes handy Ooh. Um, yes. 
Okay, we're going to just check those together right now. 13.1 or 13.2? They are. 13.2. Right, I'm going to What's that chat? No, it's an Android. I'm so behind. Okay, everybody got it? Got it. Yep. yep. Uh, all right, so let's look at question one. Uh, some people cannot eat dairy products because they cannot make the intestinal juice what? Lactase. 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 The answer is D. Uh, the secretion of what? Look, 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 maca. Yeah, is stimulated okay. by the presence of lipids in the chyme. Cholecystokinin, CCK. Yep. B. All right, uh, true or false? The largest internal organ in the body is the liver. True. 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 All right, number four. Pan pancreatic juice contains many enzymes for digestion, including including trypsinogen, chymotryp chymotrypsinogen, the peptidase, and uh, and what? Amylase. Amylase B. In what part of the liver would you find two blood vessels, one branching from the hepatic artery and one from the hepatic vein and a bile duct? Portal triad. Portal triad. Portal triad. Right. Um, and I looked at the book. The beginning region of the that was C, by the way. The beginning region of the large intestine to which the appendix is attached is the cecum. 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 A. All right. Seven. The what is a term that refers to a space in the center of a tube? Lumen. Lumen. C. Okay, the first region of the small intestine where most of the digestion takes place is the duodenum. B. Yeah, duodenum. Mm -hmm. uh, the projections that greatly increase the surface of the small intestine are called intestinal villi. Right. B. Which is not a function of the small intestine? C. What? Detoxifying blood. Right. C. Detoxifying blood. And another true and false. No digestion or absorp ah, no digestion or absorption of nutrients takes place in the large intestine. False. False. That's false. Okay. Now, the, the nutrients, uh, you should have a one if it's a macronutrient and a two in the blank if it's a micronutrient. So carbohydrate is one, one, iron, two, two, two vitamin D, two, two. Vitamin C, two. two. Fats, one. one. Iodine, two. two. Calcium, two. two. Protein, one. And folic acid, one. two. Two. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's awkward. Uh, 
Now, on your extra credit, I'm just going to read uh, the answers, uh, listing some of the functions of the liver. If you've got those uh, uh, correctly, then just uh, put a check beside it, and then you can add up your checks for the amount of extra credit you get. Um, so, uh, for you should or could have uh, these answers: bile production, uh, processing nutrients, storage, nutrient nutrient intro conversion, chemical right. manufacturing or synthesis, phagocytosis detoxification of blood. Okay, so what I'm gonna need you to do is um, to um, write or, or send me an email with the number that you missed And um, and then uh, another number, or add add the extra credit on there, and the number of extra credit points that you have. Okay. Right. I think I just scanned the quiz and sent it to you already. So I okay. Have that. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. If you already scanned it and sent it, that's fine. And I can I can uh, go through it. Otherwise, just send me the numbers and I'll send you back your grade. No, I didn't know we were supposed to do that. Okay. That is probably the way we're going to be doing quizzes as long as we're meeting online. I'll send it to you the day before. You can do it at home. Uh, and since it is a home quiz, you can use your book if you need to. And uh, then we'll check them in class. Uh, so it's kind of interesting that uh, all of this has come up just after our study of the immune system. And um, just thinking about that a little bit with the immune system, um, what for those people that have the coronavirus, what is going on in their immune system? And what's being produced? Lymphocytes. Yeah, but there's some specific things. Memory B cells is one. Mm, not white, white blood cells. Yeah. But there's some things that our immune system is especially geared for in fighting viruses. Do you remember that? Oh, uh, I, interferon? Interferon, right. So an, a, a virus attacks cells. So people that have this uh, coronavirus, their cells are being attacked. And when it attacks the cells, the cells themselves will produce the interferon to warn the neighbor cells to protect themselves. And then at the same time, what what type of of the other cells are fighting this that are specially geared to viruses? Mm, one of the antibodies? That plasma T cells? T cells, yeah. It's the T cells. Those T -cells. And so those cytotoxic T cells uh, are going to be going after uh, the viruses and actually after the cells that are containing the viruses because they're going uh, when the virus comes in it's going to change that MHC a little bit their their identifying markers are going to be slightly changed and so the T cells are going to start attacking because they say that's there's something wrong with that cell and it doesn't, it doesn't have the right identifying markers on it, so we're going to get it. And 
apparently some people are just having very few symptoms and side effects to the, uh, uh, symptoms to, of this disease. And some people are having uh, more serious uh, effects. And I guess at this point, it's too soon to tell why it, uh, things are that way. Okay, uh, let me find my PowerPoint. I'm going to have to shrink the screen down again. All right, all right, stop that. Let me exit fill screen, go down here. <coughs> All right, and let's put it, uh, share screen. Well, yeah, that's what I want to share. Hmm. Okay, are you guys seeing that? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Let me put it on slide show. Slide show. Play from start. Here we go. All right. So we're going to start uh, talk some more today about digesting things. Which is a good thing to do. All right. Um, first of all, let's just do a bit of review. Uh, last week we taught, or not last week, but whenever it was we met, that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, we talked about the stomach and uh, and some of the other parts of the digestive system. So let's think about your breakfast that you had this morning. Uh, you put a nice bite of breakfast in your mouth and then what happened? You chewed it. You chewed it? Hopefully. Yeah. And then what happened? You swallow. You swallow. Okay. And that process is called the Yeah. Once you swallow it, where does it go? The esophagus. No. Okay. It, it, it passes through the throat and into the esophagus and goes down to the what? Stomach. 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 It, it's passing through that uh, esophageal sphincter and into the stomach. Okay, so now we're going to continue the story today and we're going to find out where it goes from the stomach. So we've got that food in the stomach and it's going to be mixed around and moved around and then it's going to be sent to the small intestine. Uh, the small uh, uh, intestine is, is where most of the digestion and absorption is going to occur. Um, now, when we're talking about digestion, we're talking about the breaking down of the food into its individual molecules. So we're going from this nice big chunk of pancake or whatever it was uh, down to a little bitty teeny tiny uh, molecules. There'll be some glucose and some starch molecules and um, uh, syrup molecules. I don't know what, what those would be. I guess some kind of glucose. And then it's after it becomes those teeny, teeny, tiny little particles, then it can be absorbed. And uh, once it's absorbed, then it goes to the 
uh, liver and then to the cells so that it can be, so those little bitty molecules can be used to build other things or to carry out other functions in the cell. Okay, so let's look at the functions of the small intestine. Uh, it's going to be mixing and propelling chyme. And chyme is what we call that mixed up stuff once the, once the uh, stomach uh, gets it, pushes it out. Oh, that's what we're going to call it is chyme. It's the uh, food mixed with digestive uh, juices. Okay. Now, so the small intestine has this motor function and it's going to be squishing and moving and uh, mixing uh, continually that, uh, that chyme and then pushing it down through the rest of the small intestine. Okay, then the other function that it's going to do is to digest the food. And it's going to do that by uh, secreting a lot of enzymes, secreting uh, some hormones. Mm -hmm. And so this is the secret secretory function of the small intestine. Um, to digest the food, uh, sometimes you have to have all of the, uh, chemical reactions and chemical reactions need enzymes. And so that's what's going on with the enzymes. If those aren't there, the food can't get broken down. And then the third function is to absorb nutrients. That's the absorptive function. Okay. Uh, the anatomy of the uh, small intestine is uh, just, we've got just three regions there that we need to be concerned with. Uh, and the first one is very short. It's like 12 inches long. And that's what, what the, where the name comes from, the duodenum, is because it is 12 inches long. And uh, then it's followed by the jejunum, which is eight feet long. So 12 inches equals one foot. Um, so we got eight feet. So we're up to nine feet now. And then the ilium is actually 11 feet. So we've got uh, nine and 11 equals 20. All right, so 20 feet, uh, 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 small intestine is 20 feet long. And it's long for a reason because it's got to do a lot of digesting and a lot of absorbing of, of the nutrients. Okay. So here's a nice picture of it. Sort of a nice picture of it. All right. You see uh, the liver up at the top. There's the stomach. You see the tube attaching from the stomach. Let's see right here. All right, this is the pyloric sphincter. Then here's this tube that attaches from the stomach, it goes to about right here. That's about, uh, would it be about 12 inches? That's the duodenum. And then you're going to uh, begin, the jejunum begins right here, and it's gonna go down and around to here. Okay, and then, um, let's see, wait a minute, where is it? Um, lost my, okay. Uh, yeah, it doesn't show you where it, where it becomes the ilium uh, on here, but then the lower portion is the ilium, and then that's going to connect to the large intestine right there. So big long tube. Okay. Here's another 
more, I don't know, realistic looking. Um, all of this uh, tissue that you see around it, this kind of clearish looking tissue, that's the mesentery. And uh, it's a, a kind of a, a sheath of connective tissue that holds all this stuff together. And it's all wadded up and uh, looks like uh, kind of a mess, but it's in there and functions uh, to carry out exactly what it needs to. You see this point here is where the ileum is going to uh, empty into the large intestine. So all of the, all of the food is going to get squished and moved and moved and pushed through here. A lot of it will be absorbed. Uh, there'll be a little bit left that still has to go through the processes of the large intestine. And that's where that joins in. Okay, uh, now the small intestine is made up of layers, just like uh, very similar to the stomach. And these layers are, are pretty much the same throughout the alimentary canal, except the stomach has an extra layer of muscularis, the oblique muscularis, because the stomach really has to do a lot of mixing. Um, so the, the uh, outer layer of the duodenum is called adventitia instead of serosa. And remember that outer layer is a very slick, um, uh, mucus covered layer, so everything kind of slicks and slips and slides together nicely, uh, and we don't have so much friction. Now, the reason why it is so long and takes such a large amount uh, of tubing is because there's a, a large surface area that's requ required for digestion. You got to break those molecules up and then you've got to uh, absorb them. So uh, to help with the absorption, we have these rings of mucosa that are called circular folds and they're covered with projections that are called the intestinal villi. Uh, now, if we didn't have the intestinal villi, the small intestine would have to be like two and a half miles long to be able to carry out the, the digestion that it needs to do. But it does have the, uh, those projections, the intestinal villi, so it can carry out the absorption, digestion and absorption in a relatively small space. Okay. Uh, the uh, epithelial cells, uh, the intestinal villi itself are made up of epithelial cells that can train microvilli to increase the surface area even more. Uh, then it has also the lacteals that we talked about in module 11 um, that, uh, no, it was module 12, wasn't it? Uh, for fat absorption. So these little lacteals, part of the uh, lymphatic system, help absorb the nutrients. Then there's blood vessels for nutrient absorption. So you have the little microvilli sticking up there and it's going to have lacteals sticking up with it, blood vessels sticking up there so that it can absorb the nutrients. And then there's the mucus goblet cells that are going to be also part of this that are going to be secreting mucus to protect the intestinal tissue from the chyme because the chyme is very, very acidic. And many of the digestive enzymes, of course, for breaking down protein, you don't want to get that next to your cells because it will start eating up the tissue of the small intestine itself. So we have the goblet cells that are uh, functioning well to create, uh, to produce that mucus uh, so that it has the right kind of uh, environment there. Uh, 
And there are also intestinal glands uh, embedded with these intestinal villi that are going to be carrying out various secretions. And there's both endocrine and exocrine glands included in this. Um, now, the, to uh, take a closer look at the intestinal glands, uh, let's look at the endocrine ones first. Uh, they're going to be secreting a couple of hormones, uh, secretin, which is going to control the acidity uh, of the chyme. Uh, so what happens is when the chyme passes from the stomach to the small intestine, there's a little testing station there that checks the pH. Um, and if the pH is, is very acidic, it's going to um, cause a lot of... Um, uh, the secretin will be secreted and that will produce a lot of, uh, of basic solutions to be produced to control the acidity. Uh, and then uh, the cholecystokinin, uh, CCK, is going to cause the gallbladder to contract. So there's a testing station that recognizes fats and uh, if there's fats there, then the gallbladder is going to contract and uh, the bile will come in to emulsify the fats. All right. Um, then we have exocrine glands. And these are the uh, located throughout the intestine, but there's some in the uh, duodenum itself called the duodenal glands. And these are going to secrete an alkaline mucus to, neutra to neutralize the acid in the chyme. Uh, the first secretion, and this is the first secretion that the uh, uh, small intestine is going to produce to neutralize the uh, chyme. Remember that acid in the stomach is very, very strong, very, very high pH, or very, very low pH, sorry. Um, and we got to get that neutralized so that it doesn't uh, start eating into the tissues of the small intestine. So the first one is going to be an alkaline mucus from the uh, uh, duodenal glands. And then there are also going to be some uh, intestinal glands that are going to secrete an intestinal juice with a basic pH. And that's the second secretion that is going to neutralize chyme. By the time we get through this, you'll see that there are four secretions to ne neutralize the chyme so that the acid doesn't do damage. And then some of the digestive enzymes that are going to be produced by the intestinal glands are maltase, which digests maltose, which is a type of sugar, and sucrase digests sucrose, also a type of sugar. Um, peptidase breaks down peptides into amino acids. And then enterokinase activates trypsinogen into trypsin to break down proteins. And remember, we have to have this process of activating um, trypsinogen into trypsin because we can't, the cells cannot produce trypsin themselves because that would eat the cell up that was trying to produce it because these things break down proteins and the cell is full of proteins. Okay. So here's a diagram of uh, intestinal villi. Um, you see the, uh, they've taken a section here and enlarged it. So you see these folds, um, these folds are called the mucosa and these little sticky up things are called the villi. Now it looks kind of big in the picture, but actually these things, whoops, are very, very tiny. Um, and this is what the inside of the villi is going to look like. You see, uh, there's a lymph vessel, and the lymph vessel is going to be um, the 
this lacteal. That's what we're talking about, the lacteal. And uh, there's capillary vessels in there to absorb uh, the nutrients. Then the vein is going to uh, carry the nutrient laden blood to the body via the liver. It's going to go to the liver first. And then the artery is going to be there to carry the oxygen blood to the villi. So uh, we're going to have the villi uh, carrying out, uh, I mean, the arteries supplying oxygen to the villi, the veins absorbing the, lacte uh, the nutrients, the lacteals absorbing the fat. Okay, and so all of this is going to be, here's a diagram of some of the cells, and there you see those microvilli there on the cells. Okay. All right, and from there, our food is then going to be ready to go to the large intestine. And remember, as the chyme has been going through the small intestine, it's going to be continually being mixed and uh, squished. It's sort of more like maybe being kneaded, like you would need bread to mix things together. But all of these uh, digestive juices and uh, all have to be well mixed together to break down all of the food that needs to be broken down. Uh, and we're having also the thing that's causing them to move is this peristaltic wave. The peristaltic waves begin when we swallow. That's the beginning of peristalsis. We swallow, that gets it going. It goes <laughs> to the stomach throughout the small intestine and the large intestine as well. Um, okay, so if we look at the uh, large intestine, uh, there's three parts to the large intestine, and some of those parts are broken down into parts. So there's the cecum, which is just this very small little connection to the small intestine through the ilio iliocecal sphincter. Um, and attached to the cecum is the vermiform appendix. Vermiform means worm-like, so it's just a little projection there that kind of looks like a worm. Uh, and we look, learned about that in our last module, how it plays a role in the lymphatic system. Um, years ago, they were, uh, they believed the, the appendix was a vestigial organ, and so they were ready to take it out at the drop of a hat. Um, and now they're not They've learned that it's not a vestigial organ. Surprise, surprise. And uh, it does have a very important role to play because it's uh, got the good bacteria that are in your uh, large intestine. It's got a supply of those in there. And if, if you end up with uh, one of those stomach viruses that kind of cleans out everything in your uh, uh, digestive system it, and also kills a good amount of the good bacteria, you have the appendix to replace some of the, that good bacteria so that you can recover more quickly. All right. Um, and then uh, it also has uh, some, uh, it has the uh, lymphocytes and things like that around there. So it's, it's ready to fight infections and things like that. So that's the appendix. Uh, then the next part is called the colon. Um, and there's three parts to that. There's the ascending part, the transverse part, and the descending part. So that's got to be uh, pretty easy to figure out which is which. Uh, the ascending is going to extend from the ileocecal sphincter up uh, to almost like 
the area of the diaphragm and then it's going to go across that's the transverse and then it's going to go down that's descending okay and then uh, there's another area called the sigmoid colon that's going to curve around and lead to the rectum um, the rectum is going to be the area where the feces is collected for elimination through the anus all right. So here's the functions of the large intestine. First of all, it's going to be removing a lot of the water from chyme in order to form the feces. Then there will be a little bit of digestion going on. Um, and that's going to be uh, primarily through those good bacteria that you have in your uh, large intestine. Um, the bacteria is going to use a small amount of chyme for the food. And then as a result, it's going to produce some good things like vitamin K and biotin and folic acid as by, byproducts. Um, vitamin K is important in blood clot, uh, clotting and uh, biotin is uh, a vitamin that we, uh, that, kind of maintains the uh, structures and uh, stuff of uh, other things like that in our body. Um, a lot of times if you're having trouble with your fingernails breaking a lot or your hair uh, not looking like it should, looking dull and things, uh, they'll give you uh, biotin or products that contain biotin. Uh, <coughs> then folic acid, uh, is important in growth. And so all of these are very, very important uh, byproducts of the digestion of those little bacteria. Um, now, the these uh, byproducts are also absorbed in the large intestine and then distributed throughout the body. Um, there's also some things that get broken down uh, further by the bacteria in the large intestine. Uh, the bilirubin, which is produced by the liver, some proteins and some remaining carbs are broken down by the bacteria. And of course we see these goblet cells again that are gonna be secreting a lot of basic mucus for protection from the acidic uh, byproducts of bacteria. <clears throat> so here's a, the colon. You see the cecum. Uh, there's a little appendix hanging off there. The ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon. Now the sigmoid colon is part of the descending colon. That's why they're both colored blue here. So it's all part of the thing, but uh, it is because it is a little bit different shape. It kind of gets its own name, that section does in the rectum and the anus. Okay, and here's what it would look like in the body. Um, you see all of these small intestine portions and then uh, there's the little appendix hanging off the cecum. The ileocecal sphincter would be right in here. This area is the cecum. Then we start actually the uh, ascending colon transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, anus. Okay. Now, uh, the part we've just gone through is the part that's all part of the alimentary canal. But we do have some accessory organs that are not part of the alimentary canal that play an important role in the digestive system, uh, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. And we'll look at those now. All right, so the liver uh, is, of course, a very, very important organ if you can't live very long without your liver functioning well. It has two major lobes 
the left and the right, and it has two minor lobes, the caudate and the quadrate. Uh, it's served by the hepatic artery. And we're gonna see this term hepatic frequently uh, when we're talking about the liver because I, uh, that's one of the root words that means liver in Latin. Um, so the hepatic artery is going to bring in oxygen and then the hepatic portal vein is going to bring in nutrients for processing. So the liver is going to have arteries that are bringing in blood and uh, veins that are bringing in blood because it is this huge processing station. Uh, so if we look at the microscopic structure of the liver, uh, the tissue is divided into lobules, which are hexagonal shapes, and they have uh, like a portal triad, which is two blood vessels, one from the hepatic artery, one from the hepatic vein, and a bile duct in each corner. Uh, the functional cell of the liver are hepatocytes. Okay, now here's the uh, liver functions which are important for you to know. Uh, the liver produces bile. And uh, what bile does is it emulsifies fats. So that means it uh, breaks them down into, instead of large globules. Um, I guess you've all uh, seen oil, like mixing, putting some oil onto the water or maybe some oil float, uh, floating on top of a bowl of soup or something like that. And it's these big globules. So what it, a bile does is it breaks them down into little bitty bubbles. Like uh, if you were to take that oil and water and shake it up, uh, it's temporarily emulsified. Um, and you see that the fat looks like just little bubbles and that's what that's what bile does is just turns it into these little bubbles of fat instead of these big globby circles of it um, and then uh, that makes it a lot easier to digest when it's like that instead of the big blobs as you can imagine um, then the li liver has storage functions because it stores excess glucose as glycogen and if the body uh, runs low on uh, glucose, then uh, there'll be a message sent to the liver and it's going to begin converting glycogen back into glucose so that the body has enough glucose. Um, it also is involved in nutrient inter interconversion. So it's gonna process nutrients, it's gonna combine them into more useful chemicals. Uh, then the synthesis function is it's going to make many chemicals that are used throughout the body, such as coagulation factors, uh, the prothrombin in the fibrinogen that we've talked about uh, are produced in the liver. And there's other uh, very useful chemicals that are produced in the liver. Um, another thing it does is phagocytosis. Um, it's going to be removing the worn out blood cells and it's going to be removing bacteria, any other substances that it detects in the blood that doesn't need to be there. It's going to take care of them. And then detoxification. It's going to convert toxic substances into less harmful substances. And uh, the breakdown of proteins a lot of times produces ammonia. And ammonia is a pretty toxic substance. So the liver is going to convert that to urea, which is going to be sent to the uh, kidneys to be eliminated. So the liver is, uh, when the liver start uh, stops functioning, uh, people are in serious trouble. 
as you can see, it has a lot of very important functions. So here's the right lobe, the left lobe of the liver. And this is looking at it, uh, you know, face on. This is, if you were to cut somebody open, this is what the liver would look like right there. You see it's held uh, kind of in, it's divided into these two sec uh, segments by these uh, ligaments. You see the gallbladder peeking out on the, un on the underside down here. All right. And then this is the back side of the liver. There's the gallbladder up here. Uh, you see the inferior vena cava surrounding uh, this. Uh, here's the portal vein that's bringing uh, nutrients into the liver. Here's the hepatic artery. This is the, the common bile duct. You see the bile duct. Uh, so the gallbladder is right there. Uh, these ducts are going to be, uh, there's all th kinds of things in there that are going to be running down into the gallbladder uh, for its, it to ha have the bile and then it's released by through uh, what's called the Okay. Now this is looking at some of the microscopic structure of the liver. You see these, the uh, little sections there, uh, little hexagonal sections uh, of the liver. Uh, lobules, the hexagonal shape. Uh, then at the corners of this, you're going to see the portal triad. And this is a bile duct, a vein. I mean, an artery and a, I mean, a yeah, vein and an artery, except very tiny ones. Okay. Now we're going to look at this liver slide. This is what we would have been doing in our lab today. Um, this thing here. It's 11 hours. Huh? What? That's a slide of the liver. Liver cells. Very pretty, isn't it? All nice and purple, but of course you know that it's been stained. So it might not be that color if you're looking at it without stain. But of course, then you might not be able to see anything. Okay. Um, now, the first thing you see this large hole here. Uh, and there's there's several of them um, holes, but this is uh, the vein, and um, you look at the structure around the hole, um, and notice that these tissues are are different than what's uh, throughout the rest of it. Um, then out in here, all of these dots that you see are the nuclei of the hepatocytes. Um, and then you see all these little canals in between, these little canals that are running everywhere. There's, uh, you see lots of little white gaps in between there. And these uh, are the uh, hepatic sinusoids and the, the bile caniculi. Now, what is a caniculi? What is that? What does that mean? It's a, a spiral tight packed. I don't remember what it holds. Okay, it's a, a caniculi is just a very, very tiny little canal. Okay. So it's a tiny little tube. Um, and there's all of these running through here because the liver, of course, the hepatocytes are producing bile. And so it's going into these little canals and going down to where it finds uh, one of these portal triads, like maybe right here. One of these is going to be 
a um, bile duct, and so it will it will pick up the the bile that has been formed and take it to the gallbladder. Um, these this little area here, there's kind of a couple of them, and you see this is kind of a roughly hexagonal shaped thing here, but these little uh, bile ducts, I mean, uh, portal portal triads right here would be one. You see the three larger holes there. Uh, and that is, one of them is a vein, one of them is an artery, one of them is a bile duct. Okay. All right, so that's what we would have seen in our, on our micro, microscope. And fortunately online, you can just look up uh, all kinds of microscopic images and you just type in microscopic image for the liver or microscopic images of the lung. Uh, and you should be able to find uh, images that will uh, meet the requirements of what your lab is, is telling you. Okay. All right. So from the liver, we'll go to the gallbladder and look at the functions of the gallbladder. It's going to concentrate and store bile for release into the duodenum. So there's a connection from the gallbladder to the duodenum which is, um, is going to be uh, for the release of the bile. And again, there's a signal um, when, when uh, your, the uh, chyme co comes into the, to the uh, duodenum, there's a uh, place uh, that checks the fat level that's going to be, that's going to signal to the liver or to the gallbladder to release that. It's going to uh, release that hormone, CCK, and it's going to cause the gallbladder to contract. Now, bile itself is also a basic secretion. So this is the third secretion that's going to neutralize the acid of the stomach. Um, okay. And then let's look at the pancreas, our third vestigial organ. I'm not vestigial, our third accessory organ. Um, the functions of the pancreas, of course, would be to produce pancreatic juice. Um, and the pancreatic juice is basic. And so now we have our fourth secretion that neutralizes chyme. Uh, the pancreas uh, or the pancreatic juice also is going to contain enzymes like trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, procarboxypeptidase, and all of these things are activated in the intestine to break down proteins. It also contains amylase, which breaks down polysaccharides. Um, now, do you remember? What are, what are the first glands that secrete, secrete uh, amylase in the digestive process? Those are the salivary glands? Salivary glands, right. Uh, so yeah. it's produced in the salivary glands and then again in the pancreas to break down polysaccharides or starches. Um, and start these polysaccharides are very, very long chains uh, and they have to be broken down into uh, small chains like glucose. All right, it also, uh, the pancreatic juice also contains lipase to break down fats and nuclease, which breaks down the nucleic, nucleic acids. So when you're eating food, uh, you're also eating DNA of plants and animals, and uh, uh, those nucleic acids have to be broken. Have uh, a, a uh, enzyme that's going to do that, secreted by the pancreas, 
Now the pancreas is also a very, very important organ. <coughs> and so uh, that's why uh, problems with the pancreas, uh, pancreatitis and uh, so forth can be so very severe. All right. There's a drawing of what the pancreas looks like. It's uh, located, it, it uh, empties into, this is the duodenum. So it's gonna empty into there. Um, the stomach, this is the pyloric sphincter here. So, whoops, it keeps doing that. Uh, so uh, the stomach would be right in this area. They've taken the stomach away so that we can see the pancreas. Um, and the, you see the, all of the duct work here <laughs> going down, uh, emptying in to the duodenum. There's the gallbladder up here, and here's the duct, and it's emptying in. Notice there's another duct coming down here called the common hepatic duct. Uh, so the liver can empty bile into the pancreas without it going through the gallbladder. The gallbladder is just an, a, a storage sack. Sack. Um, it's a storage sack where the bile can get concentrated, um, but Sometimes people develop problems with the gallbladder. Um, most, most commonly stones, gallstones, that can come up uh, and get moved around and get up in here into this duct area and block the duct off. And of course, that's going to create uh, a good deal of pain because uh, if it can't get out, the gallbladder is going to swell up and so sometimes that gallbladder has to come out uh, and that's fine. Uh, you can continue to live uh, a normal life without a gallbladder. Uh, you may just have to be a little bit more careful about the fats in your diet, but the liver is going to continue to put bile into the intestine even without a gallbladder. You just don't have this, uh, the gallbladder that can contract and send extra bile in there if you eat a meal of french fries and fried chicken and uh, mashed potatoes with lots of butter and all of that sort of thing. So uh, you don't have the, the capacity to, to send in the extra bile as needed, but you still will get bile in there from the liver. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit, since we're talking about digestion, let's talk a little bit about nutrition. Um, and this is a very hot topic. Uh, and you hear a lot of uh, people weighing in with this diet and this diet and this thing you should eat and this thing you should not eat and, and so forth. And it gets a little bit confusing. Um, who do you believe? <laughs> so the basic things about nutrition is it's not that complicated. Okay. Um, first of all, you have your macronutrients that you need, fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. Um, and just common sense will tell you, you don't need tons of one over the other, you need to keep things in balance. Um, and that's where we get in trouble is because we sometimes get out of balance. Um, and some, sometimes the diets that come out, like there's one where you just eat proteins, you don't eat any carbohydrates. Um, and that can help you lose weight. And yes, it can help you lose weight, but there's other problems that go <clears> along <throat> with that because you've got lots of proteins that, you, in, that are in your system and, uh, 
and they're they're not balanced out and it really messes up uh the your your uh the way the blood uh looks when they do a, a test of your blood it, it, it messes up your blood chemistry is what what it does so that's not necessarily a really good thing so the best thing to do is just uh to eat a little bit of fats because you do need fats <clears throat> um uh, so you have need to have these essential fatty acids to produce prostag prostag prostaglandins and phospholipids for the plasma membrane. Uh, also, many of the vitamins that we have have to be dissolved in uh, fats, fatty acids. They can't uh, be absorbed in the body if they're not mixed in with the fatty acids. Um, so we need that. We need uh, some amino acids. There's eight to 10 essential amino acids that cannot be made by the body. Uh, and we have to have that. And a complete protein is gonna contain all the essential amino acids. That doesn't mean it's gonna contain every single amino acid. It's gonna contain all the essential. And these are the ones that cannot be made by the body. Uh, does anybody know what a, uh, an example of a complete protein? Eggs. Mm, not Guesses? sure about eggs. No. Is it milk. Guess? Milk is a complete protein. Hmm. Eggs might be. I'm not sure. I'll have to check on that. Um, sunflower seeds, maybe? I don't know. I'll have to look into that too. <laughs> the only one I know for sure is milk. All right. So let's look at the micronutrients. Oh, by the way, carbohydrates also you need. Uh, let's go back to the other screen. Why do you need carbohydrates? Cellular energy, like uh, sugars for them to break down. Right. So if you don't have carbohydrates, you're not going to get the glucose that you need. Um, and carbohydrates uh, can come from many sources. We tend to think of uh, bread and cake and potatoes and that sort of thing, but they also come from other sources. Uh, fruits have some carbohydrates in them and some vegetables have some carbohydrates. Um, but you need to be sure you're getting enough carbohydrates uh, uh, in your diet because especially your brain, your neurons need the, the carbohydrates because that is the only, the glucose is the only thing those neurons can use to produce energy. So they have to, you have to have a lot of that available for them. All right. Then there's vitamins, the micronutrients. Um, uh, and vitamins are highly complex organic molecules, which our body must have, but not synthesize. Now we can synthesize some of them, but most of them we can't. And these are important to regulate chemical processes. And they're also a lot of times act as coenzymes that work with other enzymes. Uh, they can be fat soluble or water soluble. Um, vitamin D, K, and biotin and folic acid are ones that are synthesized by the body, but you know that there's tons more vitamins than that. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so we need, we need more than just that. Um, uh, probably um, a lot of you are aware of uh, vitamin C and its importance and how uh, sailors that went on long journeys back when would develop a condition called scurvy. But if they took oranges along and ate oranges on their journey, they didn't develop that condition. So that was uh, showed the necessity of vitamin C. 
Um, so vitamins can be very important, but a word of caution, uh, you need to be careful and not overdose on vitamins because that's possible to do that, to get way too many of a type of vitamin that you need. And it can have negative effects if you get too much. So just uh, be sure that if you're taking vitamins, be sure that you're uh, staying within a recommended amount. Some vitamins, it doesn't matter. You can eat, you can take as many as you want or as much as you want and the body just gets rid of it if there's too much. Okay, then we have minerals, which are inorganic substances. Uh, bulk min minerals are ones that we need in large quantities, such as calcium, which we have to have lots of calcium uh, for not just for our bones, but also for the functioning of the nervous system and the muscular system. Um, and then there's trace minerals, ones that we need in small amounts, such as iodine. Uh, if we don't have iodine, we can develop goiters on our thyroid. So it's important that we have a, a little bit of iodine, mm -hmm. but we don't need tons. Oh. Okay. Now, here's one of the recommended um, uh, diets type things, uh, diet charts. Uh, lots of servings of fruits and vegetables, um, meats and fish and beans and uh, that should be it. You should have some, but not tons. And um, then this shows a, quite a few carbohydrates. I would probably think that might be de need to be decreased a little bit there on this chart, but uh, then milk and dairy foods. And then foods containing fat or sugar, not so much. Okay. Um, so any questions? That's the end of the PowerPoint. Let's see, let me go back and go up here and find, oh wait a minute, I need to go back here. There we go. Well, let me shut that down. Okay. All right, any questions for any on any of this stuff? Is there, a, is there a certain way you want us to label the emails that we send with our homework? Um, like so you can sort them or just you uh, want us to just send you an email and just uh, say like this is my homework? Yeah, uh, well, it might help if you send your coloring in one email and the labs in one email and then the on your owns and the other stuff in a third email. Um, I have mailed your test to you. I, I need to email you the things you need to study for it, but I've already mailed your test to you. Um, I can tell you some things you need to study. You need to know the functions of the various portions of the digestive system. Um, that's pretty important. Uh, and um, you need to know that diagram of the uh, digestive system that's in your study guide. I don't remember what the what the number is on the of it on the book, but be able to identify all those parts of the digestive system. Um, now, for your test, when you're done with your test, I need you, I, I've sent them in those little small envelopes. Uh, I'm going to need you to return uh, or mail the test to me, and I will grade it and record it and uh, 
I will probably just wait until I've collected all the tests and then mail them all back to you so you can study them for the final, which is going to be coming up before very long. <clears throat> so, uh, any other questions? Are the due dates going to be the same for all the assignments? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And it would, it would really help if you got them turned in, like, uh, everything turned in on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And that way, um, uh, we can get them sorted and, and graded. Okay. How will we get our grades? Are you just going to put them on the website? Uh, yeah, and sometimes I'll, I'll email you with them. Okay. So. The, the whole syllabus has the whole syllabus has moved back, right? Moved back a week. So yes. The spring break. Okay. Yes, we've been moved. We've moved back a week. So you'll still have a two-week break. Um, I think in. Is it a two week break or one week? I'm sorry, one week break uh, for for uh, the Six Flags Day at the first of May. But we should be done. Well, I don't know. I was hoping to be done so you could have that whole uh, week to study and get your test done. We'll, we'll just have to see how it works out with our time. Because uh, we've got two, or I mean three, really big modules coming up. The respiratory system, the uh, urinary system, and the reproductive system. So lots of information on that. So I see two, two more puppies have joined our class. Yeah. <laughs> We're They're really pretty, needy. Yeah, we have pretty annoying dogs. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, have the same issues with mine. <laughs> but they're fun. Yeah. And in a couple of weeks, I'll get to show you my new puppy. Uh -huh. Puppy? Yeah. I want a new dog. I'm getting a new golden doodle puppy. And I want to get her brother. <laughs> but this, she's a golden it. doodle, and that one's a labrador. Oh, okay. She's a good one. Goodbye. Yeah. All righty. Well, if you have any questions or anything, you can text me, you can email me, you can call me, and we'll try to get it all worked out. Um, this is going to become more homeschooling, I guess, in a, in a sense, because uh, there's going to be a, um, uh, there's, it makes more work for me, it makes more work for you, but uh, at least we will finish out our year, and hopefully all of these quarantines will be done with in a couple of weeks, and things can get back to normal, hope, hopefully. I hope. Yeah, so you guys keep washing your hands, be safe. Don't hang out with people that have coronavirus. That's a good one. Yeah, go around, take everybody's temperature. I literally have not left my house in like two weeks. So. <laughs> I still yeah. have to work, so it's kind of scary. Really? Okay, I my work is like out for the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a job. I don't have a job till April fifteenth or something. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. Uh, a lot of people have uh, been kind of laid off temporarily anyway from because of all this. So, yeah. all right. Well, have a good week and we'll see you next week. We say it. Thank, thank you. you. All, right. all right. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.